Well, hello, patrons of Livingston Public Library. My name is Patricia Diesel, and I am your host for today. My presentation for you is What's in Your Closet? 10 Things You Can Toss Today. So let's start. I'm going to put this actually in slideshow so we can see it a little bit better, okay? So give me one moment. There we go. Alrighty. Now, one of the things that I found myself recently asking was this question, what really matters? And you're probably asking yourself, okay, but what does that have to do with closets? And my answer to you is everything. You see, our current world affairs has influenced all of us and has us thinking, right, about many things. And one of the questions, like I said earlier, that I ask myself is, is this going to matter to me? Is it going to matter to me today, tomorrow, six months, a year, five years from now? That's how lately I've been making my decisions because when we're in a situation that is chaotic and you know there's no stability, we have to start thinking differently in terms of how we make our decisions. So one of those questions that I ask myself when I'm about to make a decision is, will this really matter? And then I started thinking about, if I'm asking myself that question to make decisions for myself, how does that really matter with my clients in terms of them letting go of things that they should be parting with, their clutter, et cetera, et cetera. And so I started thinking about how it relates to obviously our stuff, right? That's hidden behind uh, closed doors in closets because that's what happens for a lot of people. Some people have all different sizes and shapes of clutter. Some of it is outwardly manifested for everyone to see. And some people's clutter is stuffed away neatly. <laughs> I shouldn't, when I say neatly, I mean the door is closed. So when you walk in, you don't see everything, but everything is behind closed doors, okay? And when um, we look into our closets and we peer in, what do we usually see? Well, we have many things and the list can go on, but we have uh, clothes and hats and shoes and belts and ties and pocketbooks and scarves, right? So there's many, many, many things in there. And I also know that there are many reasons why we're still holding on to the stuff and a lot of you struggle with this. A lot of people think, oh, it's you know just so simple. We just clean out our closets, but it's not. Closets, they send a little bit of a message, and we're going to get into that in a second. So if you know I'm keeping some of the things in my closet, then I started thinking, if I'm going to hold on to my stuff, and I'm really going to keep those things, then I want to make sure that I love those things, right? And when I talk about really loving those things, what I'm really talking about is I want to make sure that you're treating it with respect and that you really care for it. So if your wardrobe items in your closet are things that you feel good in and you love and you want to keep, then that should reflect the way you take care of them. So if you are keeping items in your closet, you want to make sure that you respect them enough that you value them because the things that we wear, our wardrobe, is a reflection of how we're really feeling about ourselves. okay? So it's really a little bit deeper than just cleaning out closets today, all right? Now, the other part of it is, if you don't want um, items in your closet, that's okay. And if you find that they're not making you feel good and they're not reflecting who you are today, and it doesn't really matter to you, then it's time to let it go. But you have to be really honest with yourself when you're making choices about what you want to keep and what you want to let go of, all right? Now, there's an old saying, closets are indicative of our mind. Messy closet, messy mind, messy mind, messy closet. In other words, our closets reflect back the way we are operating in life. Okay, I think there's a ring of truth to that statement. Think about that, you know, like I said earlier, you know, if you're living in a chaotic 
space, right? And obviously these are chaotic times, but a lot of people just stuff things back in the closet so they don't have to deal with it. But eventually what happens? You're gonna open the closet and you're gonna be faced with chaos. So when we have a messy mind, we're going to manifest in clutter. And when there's clutter around, we already know that it messes with our mind. We have a cluttered mind. So when we look inside our closets, our closets are just a representation of what's going on for us, how we're operating in life. Now, there's something funny here, a, a little sense of humor, but how many times have you done this? How many times have you gone in the closet looking for something and you can't find it? You get frustrated, you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed out, and before you know it, you're like just wasting all of this time either in or outside your closet just peering in, right? So we don't want that to happen, right? The idea is to go into the closet, pull the things that you need out and get dressed and be done with it. You don't want to be wasting a lot of time in the closet. So it always sounds like a good idea, I know, but like I said earlier, a lot of people have challenges with cleaning out their closet and that's understandable, right? That's why you need a little bit of a plan. And that plan really is about understanding again what I said, what are you valuing? What do you feel good about? How do those clothes, your wardrobe reflect um, you know, your inner truth? How do you want to portray yourself to the outer world? If you really don't like the wardrobe um, items any longer, it's okay to get rid of them. And there's many reasons why we hold on to things is we're gonna actually get into that in a moment. But I want you to try to be really honest with yourself when you start to clean out your closet. And that's going to make the process a lot easier because again, it sounds easy, but it's not always. We don't wanna waste a lot of time either. So 10 things you can toss today. Number one, anything that you haven't worn in the past year. Yeah, now look at this picture, right? Some of the things, I mean, you see overall, like an overall dress in there. If you're holding on to that because of a memory or whatever, we're, which we're gonna get into a little bit later, but things that don't represent, you know, how you want to show up in the world. So I want you to take an honest look at the items that you haven't worn in the past 12 months and ask yourself, why? Are they outdated? You don't like the way you feel in them? You know, put aside the specialty items for a moment, okay? Those, those are probably items you're never going to, you know, wear again or use again, and we're gonna get into that later. But here's the thing, if you haven't worn it in the past 12 months, ask yourself why, like what's going on for you? And then answer it honestly, and then let go of it. If it's not a keeper, right? If it's not a keeper, let it go. Now, number two, clothes that don't fit, right? How many times have we <laughs> done this? I know we're all guilty of it. We keep things that just don't fit. We've all done it before though, because we've purchased something that's irresistible. We had this fantastic sale and we convinced ourselves that, you know, it's okay that it's too big, that it doesn't fit. We'll get it altered, right? And then what happens? We never do. And it sits in the closet and we just stare at it when we go into the closet going, well, you know what? I will. One day I'm going to get it altered, but we never do. And then there comes the time when, you know, we go shopping and we fall in love with something that we think we're going to fit into or squeeze into. It's just a wee bit too small. Uh, uh, uh. So we need to let that go too. Now, obviously there's items in here that have been sitting there for a really long time based on whatever happened. You went shopping, you convinced yourself it's too big or, you know, um, but you're gonna get it altered, I mean, or there's things that are too small and you said, well, I'm gonna lose weight. And whatever your situation might be, could be that you did lose weight or you did gain weight or whatever your circumstances. But here's a problem. A lot of people hold on to things because of that fact. And they're like, well, one day I'll gain weight or I'll lose weight, right? But no. So 
if you want to, if you're really struggling with this, what you could do is you could package it up, like put it in a box or a bin, label the date and no more than another 12 months. And I mean it no more than another 12 months, then you get rid of it. All right. So if you're playing a mental game with yourself, remember it's mental clutter, then go ahead and do that. But I would really prefer you be honest with yourself and say, you know what? I don't know. I, I really don't know, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm just going to get rid of these clothes. All right. Because most of the time you're not going to be able to squeeze into it or, whatever. So get rid of those babies and share the love and give it to somebody else. All right. Number three. Now just take a look at this picture. I mean, I love those shoes, those wedges. They're beautiful, aren't they? And those strappy heels. But what happens? They're either too big, too small, or they just plain hurt. But what do we do? You know, we convince ourselves, but they're so super cute. And we just want to hold on to them because it just feels so, I don't know. It's just so hard to let go of that stuff, right? So what we have to remind ourselves of is that it's painful, right? They're going to hurt our feet and we're going to end up with blisters on our toes, you know, like the little piggy toe where you're squeezed in, jammed in, and you come home and you gotta get a band-aid for it. It's just not right. Or your heels are all like scuffed up and bleeding. It's just, wah! All right, so even those strappy heels that look so sexy and they just look so cool, maybe, you know, you want to downgrade the heels too high or they're just uncomfortable, whatever the situation. Again, be honest with yourself, okay? Don't let these shoes ruin a really good time for you. Do yourself a favor and try to part with the chunky wedges and the T-strap heels, and then perhaps we'll be able to live a more pain-free life when we're out having fun, right? Number four, oh, so expensive mistakes. Now, look at this picture. I think we're all guilty of this one too. Look at her designer eyewear, coat, turtleneck, gloves. She's dressed to the nines. She's got her shopping in tow, right, with all her bags. Now, not that we can do that today and go shopping, but we've all been guilty of this. And I want to make sure that you don't make the same mistake online today because there's crazy, crazy designer shopping sprees. Okay. We buy the things and we tell ourselves it's okay. We're going to wear it regardless of, you know, the sale or whatever. Now, simply because it's too expensive and you spent the money is not good reason to keep holding on to it and wasting space in your closet. If you haven't forced yourself to wear it by now, the truth is you're not going to, all right? I want you to learn from your experience and I want you to be able to release and let it go. Now, a lot of times when I deal with, um, you know, the challenges for my clients who are having difficult times, you know, letting go and, and just releasing this stuff, we find that it's because they've made an expensive purchase and they're feeling overwhelmed with guilt and shame about it because of the money. But here's the thing, you, at some point, you're going to have to release and let go. At some point, you're going to have to just forgive yourself and move on with it. Okay. So, you know, gift it to someone else who can really use it and they're going to be so stoked about it, right? They're going to be appreciative of having a designer garment. And here's the thing, if you've never really worn it or, you know, wore maybe once or twice, it's like brand new. So I think that's the best way. Just again, forgive yourself, move on. And if you've done this in the past and now you're shopping online, be more mindful of what you're purchasing regardless of that sale kind of go back to again is it too big is it too small maybe i'll lose weight or gain weight or whatever your circumstances is because you can't resist the sale and you just feel like you want to even fill a void for yourself so you want to do some you know um 
<laughs> retail therapy, so to speak, just give it an, a second thought when you do that, okay? Oh, so expensive mistakes, don't feel good later. Ah, now, number five, which is sentimental items. You know, personally, I identify with this one a lot. I um, am a, well, I am a sentimental little bug, I am. And, you know, ballet slippers and dancing shoes and all of that, because of my background with dance, I just have a soft spot for stuff like that. Now, in that picture, you see grandma's hat, right? She wore to church. Well, I actually have a collection of my grandmother's old hats. Do you remember the days when um, Macy's was called Bambergers? Yeah. So I actually had my first credit card with Bamberger's and my grandmother um, bought things, you know, way back then. And I, some of those things that I held on to actually had the old label. So, you know, it kind of like I get, you know, a little reminiscent there. So I understand what you may be going through, but what I want you to do is really think about the items that make the most sense for you to keep again. We can't hold on to everything. So the things that you really value, the things that you really love, the things that really speak to your heart are the things that you should keep, okay? Now, again, I'm not saying these things, all of these things that are sentimental, you should get rid of, but if they're in your closet, they're taking up valuable space and they're not wardrobe items, right? So what I want you to do is box them up, okay, and put them somewhere else, right? Just, you know, create a memory box, put the things in a memory box if you can't part with them. And um, I think your closet's going to feel a hell of a lot more organized and serene when you do that. All right, so sentimental items, do I really love it? Do I, you know, really value it? Do I really respect it? If so, then I'm going to make a memory box of just the special ones and I'm going to keep those and I'm going to let the other things go. All right. Number six. Yeah, I think we can all relate to this. Bridesmaid dresses, gowns, borrowed items, they're all in the closet. Again, a lot of this represents a memory of the occasion, the money that we spent on being, I don't know how many bridesmaids. <laughs> um, and then borrowed items for that occasion. The thing about bridesmaid dresses is that they're not all created equal. And if you were able to reuse that bridesmaid dress, well, lucky for you. But I know a lot of people hold on to it because of the investment, right? And perhaps the memory, but usually it's the investment. Just like a gown, like you purchased a gown for you know, a wedding or a black tie event, and you know you're never going to wear it again because it doesn't fit or it's outdated or whatever the circumstance may be. Again, you need to be really honest with yourself. Does this really matter to me? You know, does this gown really matter to me today? Maybe back then, but does it really matter to me today? Now, with respect to the borrowed items, you know, like a shawl, for instance, you may have borrowed, it's time to give it back, okay? Your girlfriend wants it back. Always be mindful when you borrow things and return it in good condition. That way you get to borrow it again, all right? But now is the time to let those old bridesmaid gowns go. Any other, you know, gown that you know you're never going to wear, let it go. And borrowed items you're going to return. All right, got it? All right, now this one is a funny one, okay? Number seven, raggedy undergarments, PJs, and tees. I can hear you already, and I know you're probably laughing to yourself because we all do it. I know personally that it's a struggle when you have that really comfortable pair of like, PJs and they're just like worn almost to shreds, but you just love them. It's like kind of like an old Raggedy Ann and Andy doll, right? So I get it. But here's the thing, you know, I ask yourself this, this question. If you were caught off guard wearing these garments, 
how would it make you feel? I mean, I'm just saying, and I'm just the messenger, so please don't shoot me, but think about it, right? We have holes in our undergarments and, you know, just, yeah, I think you want to get rid of it. You get my point. Now, the thing about old t-shirts, sometimes we hold on to these t-shirts because they have logos or we were at a convention or it brings back, you know, a memory or, of something in high school and I don't know. But if you're holding on to these, maybe time to just take a picture of some of these um, t-shirts and then, you know, store that in the old memory bank and then let the rest go. All right. Number eight outdated jeans yeah this is this is a lot you know this goes on to a lot of different things for many people why because there's skinny jeans and there's taper jeans and there's bell jeans and there's wide jeans and there's hip hugger jeans and oh my gosh like if you think about where we are today and into the past and the different styles of fashion and how jeans were really you know, affected by this, I can understand why we have so many jeans in our closet. But if you're not able to wear them, if they don't feel good, if they're not comfortable, and they don't reflect your best self, again, I'm just saying, wouldn't it be nicer to get a pair of jeans, upgrade, make the little investment here, I'll give your permission to do a little shopping, to make yourself feel a little sexy, feel comfortable, feel good in them, right? All right, so we don't want you to recapture the past anymore and you know start living there too long. It's time to let that go and start moving into the present, right? That's where the magic happens. So I want you to live in the now, get rid of those old jeans for good and start to upgrade and get something that makes you feel really really good for today, okay? Number nine, now remember earlier when I was talking about the seasonal items and I said to you, you know, your wardrobe, I mean, your closet should be really limited to your wardrobe everyday items, okay? Not seasonal items because we already want you to get in and out of the closet without a lot of stress, without, you know, looking for your things and things like your seasonal items. They're just gonna you know, mess you up a little bit. So this goes with your ski outfits or goggles or wetsuits or golfing or anything in there that's taking up space. I want you to get, um, you know, maybe box them up and consider moving them. You don't have to get rid of it unless you want to. You know, you can sell them. Um, there's a lot of places you could post them now. But consider moving these items to, if you have an attic, a basement or a storage unit or any out of the way space, okay? Remember, it's not um, wardrobe items for everyday utility, all right? So seasonal items we want out of your main closet. Now, number 10, old beat up crummy hangers. Yeah, I think, you know, we can relate to that. Now, another point before I go on further, with respect to your seasonal items, you know, and, um, and even these crummy hangers and so forth. If you have, you know, we're not just, if we don't just talk about your wardrobe closet, like your bedroom, okay, or something, but you have a whole closet and, and pantries and dressers and drawers and things like that, okay, cleaning things out, um, you know, it's really about, again, what you can let go of so you're living in the present moment, right? And your seasonal items, if you have another closet that you can just dedicate to seasonal items, that's great. If not, then you know you want to just, again, keep that closet to everyday utility. Now, back to the hangers. One of the simplest things you can do to give yourself a closet makeover is to upgrade hangers. You know, the velvet hangers that they have now and the satin and, and wooden hangers, it kind of it really gives a lift to your closet. It makes it feel so much better. So any of those crummy bent, you know, hangers and the ripped paper that comes from the cleaners, just let them go. All right. Because your clothes never hang properly on them anyway. Now here's a little tip. Sometimes the hangers serve as like a volume checkpoint, right? When you run out of hangers, it's usually time 
to clean out and purge. So that's your little message, okay? And then it's time to like, you know, I guess I have to just do a little cleanup here. You don't want your closets to get to the point where you're ripping everything out and starting over again. You want to be able, once you do that, maintain it. And that's the maintenance of your closet, okay? That's something that you should do periodically. And that's one way to, to tell. If you're running out of hangers, maybe you need to look around and say, what can I take out and get rid of and, and give away a gift to someone, donate, whatever it may be, and um, you know, get the closet back to being organized. All right, so now it's time for a little self-reflection, okay? <laughs> so when was the last time you cleaned out your closets? Remember I just said to you, you want to clean out a closet and you want to get it done the right way. So take your time, you know, do it right because you don't want to keep doing it over and over. And you want to use some of these tips that you learned today where, you know, you can just go in and do a little maintenance so you're not spending a lot of time, you know, redoing it all, all over again. The other thing is be mindful. The idea of going into an organized closet is because you want to be able to find your things easily and readily and be able to take them out of the closet so you're not wasting a lot of time, right? All right, now the next question is, do you usually hold on to your things for far too long? If you are, be honest again with yourself. Why are you doing it, right? Is it because you're living in the past? You're holding on to something? Is it evoking a memory? Is there grief and loss there? You know, listen, everybody's story is different and everybody is entitled to their mourning and their grief and their loss. But there comes a time eventually when we're going to have to let go. And I much rather you learn how to let go respectfully, right? Um, and not be so tormented any longer with holding on to the things. So this one creates a little bit of um, a little more thought here, okay? Now, would you say your wardrobe exists of newer, older items? Again, when I say older items, are you living in the past where like those swanky little jeans you couldn't part with because you're holding on to that memory, right, of being younger or whatever the situation may be? Or are there newer items in there? Are you doing too much retail shopping, mental therapy here, okay? So again, we have to be mindful because what this does, remember when I said earlier that quote, um, our closets are indicative of our mind, it also, if you look at it from this perspective, is your closets tell a story. Your closets tell you of your behaviors and your patterns and what you're up to. If I looked into someone's closet, I could tell a lot about them immediately. So remember when I said earlier too about those um, PJs and you know t-shirts and things like that that you don't want to be caught off guard with your undergarments with holes and rips and stuff like that. Here's another thing, you know, when someone looks into your closet, what's the story is you know is it saying? What does it say to someone? What does it reflect back? And does that story really represent who you are today? If not, then we need to clean out the closet, right? All right. Do you consider yourself a person with a lot of clutter? Now, again, if you're hiding your clutter in the closet and you can do that, then, you know, um, you just be mindful that that clutter, if you don't take care of it, is going to grow. If you are a person who is struggling with a lot of clutter and you have clutter all existing in your home on the floors and counters and different rooms and so forth, again, you have to be asking yourself some important questions. Why am I having this clutter? What, you know, uh, is it representing to me? And, you know, how do I let go of these? Because you can begin with that simple question is, does it really matter to you anymore? And if you're answering yes to everything, that tells me a little bit more that there's a problem there that we need to really look at and investigate from a deeper, more critical eye, okay? The idea is I don't want you to live in clutter. Now, um, are there things in your closet that don't belong there? And that simply could be what we talked about earlier. Are there seasonal items? 
Are there sentimental items? Are there things in there that you could just simply move and get your closet to be a little more cleaner? Um, and so you're not wasting, again, a lot of time in your closets searching for your things, right? All right, now, here's an important question. Why do you want to have an organized closet? Now think about what you just learned with respect to values and um, time and productivity and um, you know sentimental reasons. So what does it really mean for you? Why do you want to have an organized closet? Are you losing a lot of time when you go into your closets? Are you getting frustrated and overwhelmed? Or perhaps when you open up a closet, is it reminding you of something in the past? Is there a lot of grief and loss there? So again, be mindful and honest with yourself. So when you're ready to let go, those decisions you're okay with too. Then the final question here is, how would your daily life change if you had more control over your closets? So this kind of sums everything up, right? It probably would reduce a lot of your mental clutter. And once you cleaned your closets up, you know that, this task is over with, and now you just have to maintain the closet moving forward, right? Okay, now, um, a few more questions. Remember to ask yourself the important question when cleaning out your closets. Does this really matter? Will this matter in six months, a year, or five years from now? So that's your gauge, that's your barometer to um, being able to release and let go and also, you know, use this question with respect to the regular um, stuff in your house and other clutter that you have. If the things in your closet matter, then what did you learn? You want to show them love, right? You want to respect them and take care of them. And there's no better way of doing that than having an organized, neat, and tidy closet. Now, if you cannot do that, then it's really time to let it go. There's a little game that I play with my clients. It's called friend, stranger, acquaintance. And what that simply means is the things that we keep, that we honor, that we hold on to, that we respect, that we love, they are our friends, right? That's the things that we cherish and we love and we want to keep. And that could be in the wardrobe closet or it could be, like we said earlier, packaged up in a memory box or just out of the way from your everyday wardrobe closet. The strangers are things that don't fit. Um, you went on that mad shopping spree. You're going to forgive yourself for doing that, right? You're gonna not live in the past anymore. You're gonna be free, okay? So the stranger is something that you're just able to let go and release and you know be done with it, all right? They no longer serve you. You can't squeeze into them and you're not going to get them tailored. So just let it go. The acquaintances, sometimes, like I said earlier, you're thinking about, well, maybe possibly you're in a different situation where that weight is fluctuating. Maybe there's a health um, concern behind all of this. Maybe there's something else going on. Everybody has their own story. So that's why I said then in those circumstances, box it up, you know, put it in a bin, remove it from the closet, label it with a date, and no more, and I mean no more than 12 months, revisit it. And if your circumstances have not changed, then you know it's time to let it go for good, all right? Now, I want you to think about this. When you give your closets love, what you're really doing is giving yourself love. Okay, you're giving yourself a gigantic big hug. You're valuing yourself. You're valuing your things. Okay, and now more than ever, right, given our affairs, it's the perfect time to keep the love going and do the rest of your house. Hey, I'm just saying, and I'm just the messenger, so please don't shoot me. All right, everyone, it was really nice um, offering you this presentation. And I hope that you're being mindful and that you're safe and you continue to be healthy and go clean out those closets. Thank you very much. I'm Patricia Diesel. Bye-bye now.